When you're in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, while war rages in Gaza and tensions run high, it's sometimes easy to forget that poets and painters, artists, live here too. Hey, Marava. Faris. Faris. Imran. Hi, Imran. Uh, I'm, I'm Suleiman's son. I've come to see Palestinian Imran, yeah. artist Suleiman Mansour. Is he working on anything right now? From his basement studio in Ramallah, he produces pieces now coveted by galleries around the world. His voice speaks for multiple generations of Palestinians. Hey, Maraba, salam. Salam, Alim. Salam, Imran. Salam, Alhamdulillah. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you. Nice to meet you. So, this is your studio? Yes, welcome to our studio. Uh, thank you very much. Have you been working much? Not lately, you know. It's very hard to come to Ramallah and to go back yeah. to Jerusalem. So you you live in East Jerusalem and you work here. Yes, my studio is here. Why is it very hard? You know the the way to go back. Mm. It takes like maybe one hour and a half and even more. Because of Kalandia, the checkpoint. Kalandia and everything, you know, and the road. It's a problem. Has it become more difficult since October seventh? And, and even dangerous, you know. Sometimes you see the settlers; they are very nervous and angry. Right. And you don't know what they can do. Even when it comes to someone like you, like an elderly man in his car driving. Well, you see them in Gaza, you know. Yeah. They don't care, child or elderly man. Mm. They just want to, to revenge or something. Mm -hmm. That's how I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. Man. Yeah. yeah, it's very dangerous, the situation. Mm. Well, as soon as I came in, that caught my eye to the right, this massive mural. Do you want to tell me a bit about it? Yeah, this is like, uh, like telling the story. Of Where the does it start? Does it start chronologically? It from here. What are those tents? Th these are the Nakba, hmm. 1948. And then the revolution, revolution started, you know. Hmm. Revolution is not only sh shooting and so on, it's, uh, Art and uh, you know and uh, all all kinds of uh, you know literature and you have Nakba women. 48. You have, you have a key, camps. a gun, a book, a pen, a paintbrush, a dove. Yes, all these symbols, you know. The, it's just loaded with symbols. Symbols of the revolution hmm. in 1965 or 19 something. Jerusalem's at the heart, and then the occupation. Hmm. And Jerusalem is an occupation, and the land is occupied. You know, sometimes the olive tree symbolizes the land that was occupied in 1967, hmm. and the orange tree, uh, the, the land that was occupied in 1948. So it's uh, it's uh, it's loaded with symbolism. Is this man you? Yes, I, or my grandfather. Hmm. And it's interesting because we flow from 48 to 67, again, with all of these symbols, of all these symbolic images here. And I think we could spend, Hours we could spend days talking about each yes, yes. individual symbol. And you've got bars and imprisonment. Uh, and this is the first intifada. First intifada. And then uh, before Oslo, you know, or hmm. just before Oslo, people were really hopeful that they will get free and so on. Mm. So th th this time. It culminates with a flag and there's a flag there and uh, it's not triumphant but it, it's positive holding the flag. Is that part of the mural yet to come? Is that a hopeful end or is well, what is that? Because all of these things happen but... It's, it's uh, I, I reflect the, 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 the ideas or the emotions of the people at that time, mm. because I lived all this, all this, right. except maybe on the the Nakba I was a little child, mm. but I lived it all, and I remember how how people felt. You know, the, the people before the Oslo Agreement, they felt really. They so this a, ends at Oslo. This ends before Oslo. Before Oslo, so Oslo. Oslo is a different uh, thing. Right. So we'd have to go to the other walls and, and keep <laughs> on going for. So, Oz, so just before Oslo, there's hope of statehood, independence, of freedom. freedom. Yes, 
And so now that's been 30 years. That was 30 years ago. So 30 years from then, as a Palestinian, as an artist, how would you describe this current, this past 30 years? If not freedom, what is it? It's despair, you know. Yeah, despair. Despair. And do you think that despair has been the theme of your art since 1993? Not, not really, you know, but it has a lot of despair. Yeah. Uh, you know, sometimes an artist mixes between hope and despair and anger and uh, nostalgia. Yeah. It's, it's a mixture of all, the, of all these things, but always there is this, this despair issue in it, always. I notice you always have these very strong women, very dignified women, very upright, usually carrying something above their heads or in their, in their bosoms, in their chests. Yes. Tell me, tell me about mm. that. For, like, for example, here even, behind you, if we, if we turn around over here, when we look here, these women have similar features. They're very upright. Also here. Okay. Yeah, they're very upright, very, very strong women. Yes. Why? Tell, tell me how important that is to you. And big hands. Hmm, big hands. Like working women. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, I, 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 sim I, I use women to symbolize uh, homeland. And, uh, and the revolution here. Hmm. So it's, the woman is a symbol of, of Palestine. Hmm. So I, I, I always do it, very beautiful woman strong and proud because that's how I would like to see Palestine. Is that how it is or how you would like it, to see it, it? It's how it is in my heart and how I would like to see it in the future. And is it also how you would like others to see Palestine? Because Palestinians are used and abused in terms of other people's opinions. Yes, yes. By supporters and enemies alike. Yes, yes. So a lot of everybody wants a piece of Palestinians in terms of their own narrative. Everybody yes. wants to define Palestinians for them. So do you feel that everybody has his own idea yeah. about Palestine? Yeah. So do you feel then it's a you almost have a responsibility to try and show them your version of Palestine? Maybe not the responsibility, but I would like to uh, to show my vision of Palestine. Mm. I don't feel responsible for anything. I'm not obliged to do anything, it's just I like to do it. And uh, it's, you know, because it's important, because very strong uh, notion in the West and in Israel to, to de dehumanize the Palestinians, mm. to, to show that they are a little bit less than human beings or half human beings. So that's, that's why they, they don't deserve to have uh, full rights full human rights, like freedom of movement, freedom of everything. Like, uh, oh. you know, like being like any other people in the whole world. So I feel obliged right. to show the Palestinians as, I, as I, I see them, as I feel them. The freedom to be human beings like everybody else. Exactly, and we are human beings, not half human beings, or half beast as you call us. There's a clay artwork over here with a base of, of clay or mud and I only read names here. Tell me about these names. These are names of, um, of children who were killed in Gaza. You know, I, I, I thought that every time when I, re when I hear the news, they say that 100 child was killed here in the school and numbers, always numbers. So I thought these, these children, they have names, and they have, they have images, they have their own life. So here I'm trying to write their names. And I noticed that the names that you've written here in pencil on this page, and of course there's, there's space left here. I mean, it's devastating to think that this will, be, this will be filled, but there'll still need to be another canvas. Yes, Possibly. yes, because it, it, this is this space is like it's not finished yet. Yeah, the counting is going on. Mm. And after you do it, or after you 
embark on it, how does it feel? After I finish it. Or even just the fact that you, so you see the war raging in Gaza and now you decide this is how you're expressing your art. Tell me about the, the feeling. What does it do to you? I feel relieved a little bit. Mm. You know, before I start doing things about Gaza, I feel like a, a lot of depression, a lot of anger. And now I feel less anger. Not, not less sad, but less anger, maybe. Mm. Shall we have a cup of tea? Yeah, please. Yes. <laughs> How do you have it? You... I like coffee more than tea. Oh, you like coffee more? Okay, so let's have coffee. Is this yours? Yes. Oh, it's already prepared for you. Okay. I'll get it for you. It looks strong. Do you need strong coffee? Yeah. Why? I like coffee. <laughs> Although I have problems to sleep in the night. But yeah, still I... then you can paint, you know. The rest of us don't have the skill to do things <laughs> when we can't sleep. At least you can paint. Okay, okay. Thanks, I'll pour some tea for myself as well. Do you need me to take that spoon and put it in the, in the sink? I can take it. Yeah. I'll take it one sec. Thank you. That is strong coffee. How long have you been in this space for? This space like uh, three years. You still miss the old, cozier, tighter one? Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least uh, maybe you get more visitors here. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do they disturb you? Sometimes Are we disturbing you a little bit? Not, <laughs> not you, but many times I, know. I have visitors that they, they are disturbing, you know. Yeah. Do you get sick of some of the questions that you're, uh, you, you're asked, especially since you became maybe the foremost Palestinian artist, painter? Do you get sick of questions like, is it the role of the artist to resist? through art and, and all those. Yes, yes, many yeah. questions. I won't ask you those questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, like even, even now, five minutes ago, you said, you know, I don't feel it's my responsibility. It's just something I do. Yes. Right? Do you feel that others are trying to sort of force something more out of it? They want to add more um, to it. Yes, uh, you know, sometimes some reporters want to they want to hear me say mm. that I was forced to paint like this and like that. Mm. Like the PLO, they forced us to make this and that. Mm. But it's, it's, and it's never been like that. I mean, I'm part of the Palestinian people, I'm one of them. And I do like, uh, what I do is like, I express myself mm. because Everybody tells me art is now is individualism. Why don't you do, do your, your, your own imagination, your own love, your own mm. life and so on? Why, why should you care about others? And, and this notion is, is very, I think, not only as an artist, but as a Palestinian, it's very dangerous because people should be more social to each other. They should help each other in this situation. They should feel about each other, you know. Mm. Like in the first Intifada, it was really perfect. Everybody helped the other, and this mm. uh, feeling of, uh, you know, to, 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 to have a beautiful car mm. and a beautiful home wasn't there. You think people are too materialistic now? Now they are too, too, too materialistic. And selfish. Yeah. And selfish, and that's very dangerous, you know. And in art, art, art historians always, you know, because in the West, you know, and the, and the individualism is very important. But you're not, I'm not, you're not showing those materialistic, selfish people in your art. You're still showing the ideal. Sometimes I show, yeah, but, uh, but not, it's, I don't like to show um, uh, negative things in my art. 
like you know mm. when when we used to when I used to go outside and make landscapes. Yeah. Sometimes I see an, a settlement. Mm. I take it out. Mm. Uh, even when I go to a village, I see like this dish from the, from the TV, or you know, to um, all these uh, white or black uh, uh, things that they put to put water on them, and then mm. I, t I take them out. I I I bring everything back to the good old times. <laughs> so you have a nostalgic, aesthetic sensor in your mind. Yes, yes, and it's not only me. I think most most Palestinian creators, you know, mm -hmm. people who create, they are working a lot about nostalgia. But if you put the settlement on top of the hill, more people get to see it because it highlights the settlement. So do you sometimes feel... But, you know, the settlement is... Uh, they, they tend to hmm. bring part of Europe and put it there on the right. mountain. Right. So it's nice, you know, with red bricks and right. trees and so on. So uh, you don't show the ugly thing of it. Right. But there, as I said, there could be a political argument to say, but you should show it so that people know it's happening. I don't know. This is me thinking politically. Uh, no, yeah. I'm thinking as an artist. Exactly. Individually, I don't like to see it. Mm. Do you think if there wasn't an occupation? Okay, forget, I mean, 48, you're born into this world. If all these catastrophic, horrible events did not happen, especially with the Palestinians being dispossessed of their land, deprived of their rights, do you think you would have been a different artist growing up in a freer society? I'm sure, yeah. The, the occupation and all the political events that happened here affected us a lot. They affected every artist, not only me, every poet, every story writer and everything. The occupation is part of our creative career. I remember I was asking you about whether you paint about materialism and selfishness and all of that. And I see, I'm just looking behind you now, there's a man in a suit and tie, but the rest of it is mud. Is that maybe some metaphorical allusion to the kind of modern world that we're Maybe, but it's not finished. Oh, it's not finished. When I finish it. I'm reading too, too deeply into it, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. But it's a good idea, you know, yeah. this kind of metaphoric things. I know you've, you've spoken about it before, but I am fascinated. Tell me about the clay and the mud, because it's, it's amazing to see it up close. I saw it on uh, images online, and I've seen it in YouTube videos, but up close, it's, there's something so earthy and real and natural about it that you feel drawn to the canvas. As a, as a viewer, as an outsider. Yes. <clears throat> it's, um, I started this in the first year of the Antifada, mm. first one. The Antifada came with a philosophy that we should, uh, we should uh, boycott Israeli products and anything that we buy from Israel. So and so all the people were starting to boycott, and me as an artist, I thought, why don't I do the same? So I started to search for materials to do my art, and I thought that mud is the best material I can do it with, because my mud is a material that our ancestors they were building their houses, mm. sometimes partitions in the homes. Mm. and cupboards in the home <coughs> to put their seeds in. So it's a material that people use a lot next to the hay. And when I was a child, I used to help my grandmother. She was doing bee heaves. And I, I remember I helped her. Mm. You know, in summer, you know, for a child, playing with water and with mud. Seven, you know, <coughs> it stayed in my mind. And when I thought about the material from, from, from around to, to use it, immediately I thought about mud. 
and, and later I started to discover the symbolism of mud. It symbolizes the human beings. We as human beings are made from mud. And mud is the land, it's the homeland, it's a symbol of the land. That I, instead of painting a, a landscape, I paint with the landscape itself. Wow. Of works in progress. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> now winter started, so I paint here. My Arabic is not very good, but I do recognize this is a Mahmoud Darwish poem. Yes. Da'ashaklana lil bahr. Put our shape in the water. Yeah, da'akis al awasif. And our sakratin. Sort of tied to the rock. So the first rock. The yeah. first rock. So I painted Akka. Akka for me is the first rock you meet mm. when you come to Palestine from the sea. Mm. <clears throat> and also I, when they speak about two-state solution, I can't imagine it that I can't go and visit Akko and Jaffa and Haifa and to have my state that, uh, that I have borders and I can't go and visit my friends here and there. Uh, um, although I want a two-state solution, mm. but actually I hate it inside. Everybody yearns for one state. And you've again got this strong, dignified woman carrying, carrying yeah. the burden, but also maybe, maybe a flag bearer. This is a symbol of Palestine. It should be beautiful. I can smell the paint is fresh. I mean, it's not just that I'm smelling this, it's fresh. Yeah, right? it's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I, as I said, this, uh, I always show Palestinians, not only women, but if I paint a man, they are strong. Mm. They are not, I mean, there are people, you know, you have strong people, you have weak people, you have beautiful women, you have ugly women, you have everything. But I always like to show it, <laughs> to show it as if it's a symbol of Palestine, as a beautiful woman, strong and proud. Yeah. The Palestinian movement and artists who have been supporters of the Palestinian movement have used symbols over the years. We saw the watermelon recently being, well, not so recently, but over the years being a vehicle to express resistance. We've seen a whole bunch of symbols. I saw many of them on that mural in, on that first wall when we walked in. I think it was Borges who said that censorship is the mother of all creativity, right? Yes. So you, you express yourself with a symbol which can mean many things so you don't get in trouble, but it also transcends, it creates something deeper for people. I wonder what is the symbol now in this age, in this current situation, in this current climate? Is there, is there a particular symbol you have in mind for Palestinians and their situation? I, th I think one of the components of doing a successful symbol is that the Israelis, they hate it. This is one, the, one of the main components. And Israelis, they hate red, black, white, and uh, green. Mm. So it became a symbol. And it's not me that I started doing, you know, watermelon. Mm. It's a colleague of mine, Khaled Horani, he started this. But the story happened with me. And I was telling the story to everybody. And... Uh, you know, when, when you ask me about if I like to paint something without any political meaning, when the Israelis gave us this order that we are not allowed to paint in red, green, black and white, the officer he started to, to discuss with us about art and what shall we do. And he said, why don't you paint nice flowers? Why don't you paint a nice nude figure? 
And I mean, why should you paint politics? So from that time, I had to do flowers <laughs> and my own nude figures. I don't do it. Maybe after liberation. After liberation. If I am alive. Flowers and nudes. <laughs> flowers and nudes. <laughs> You're a true artist. It's been a pleasure. I thank you so much, sir. Thanks thank for you. taking the time. Thanks for allowing us into your your space. And we'll let you finish your your piece <laughs> of art. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Welcome. All the best. Mm -hmm.